The HIV epidemic among black men in Indiana is troubling. I think that a lot of black gay men in Indiana are not aware of their status or how HIV affects them or the preventative tools that they can use to decrease the transmission. If Brothers United were not here, there would be a great deal of people who would not be serviced. We are a community-based organization in Indianapolis. Our goal is to enhance the health and wellness of our community. So we provide a variety of services that are focused around HIV prevention and also HIV care. So on the prevention side, we offer HIV testing. We offer comprehensive risk counseling services for individuals who are high risk. We also offer a variety of supportive services and support groups. And then we also have a variety of services that go towards helping individuals living with HIV. We are reflective of the community that we serve, and we're very passionate about helping members of the black LGBT community. The areas that we actually canvass are the high-risk areas, and we go right into the clubs, right into wherever the sex workers are, and you know, just try to be face-to-face -face with them and get them information. We don't always have the resources to fully meet the needs of the communities. I think it's very important for agencies that have the capacity to support smaller agencies. For example, the Damien Sanders Linkage to Care program has been successful because it partners with Brothers United, which has direct access to these communities. Some areas we're great in, some areas they're great in. The Damien Center and the Brothers United have a really great relationship. I am actually a Damien Center employee that comes over here to Brothers United full time to provide care coordination to the clients here. The Damien Center seeks to provide wraparound services in-house, so we have testing services and if someone tests positive, then we connect them with care coordination, which is like HIV case management, and then connect them to a whole host of supportive services. So that includes nutritional support, we have a food pantry in-house, we also have housing services, employment services, mental health services, we even have haircuts, and then we also connect people people to our medical clinic, which is Damien Cares, where people are able to access infectious disease and primary care services. Damien Cares and Damien Center work as a team to provide HIV services and services for high-risk HIV negative patients. Damien Cares provides the clinical support. We obtain the labs here, we treat the patient, and behind the scenes kind of what happens is what Damien Center does. Without Damien Center, Damien Cares would not be able to provide the care that we do. Additionally, we have our Linkage to Care program where we can provide support to anybody who is newly diagnosed or struggling to maintain in care. My role here at Brothers United is to provide care coordination for people that are positive in the community. I assess their needs and I get them to the right agency that can provide the correct services for them if we don't have the service in-house to provide. When someone is first diagnosed with HIV, they really have nowhere to go. They can't navigate the system and so my job is to kind of teach them the ropes, help them navigate the system and show them where they can find the resources that they need. There have been times where I've actually gone to a doctor's appointment with someone because they just weren't comfortable going by themselves. Brothers United's Linkage to Care program is so successful because we utilize people that are in the community and so they already have a base and they have a rapport with the people that we are trying to touch and reach and bring in. It's not hard to get clients connected to care, our hardest part is keeping them connected to care. We try to develop a, a close relationship so if I know that you haven't been in care or I hear that you haven't been in care, then my next thing is to get straight to Facebook and find out, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Not to badger you or to make you feel like I'm chasing you, but I really am chasing you so I can get you back in care. My goal is to reduce the community's viral load. I do that by engaging individuals who are newly diagnosed or individuals who have been in care but have some difficulties staying active and engaged in care. We have to start addressing some of the social determinants of health that impact individuals. Do they have somewhere to sleep at night? Do they have love and support from family? Is their mental health stable? All of these things impact a person's ability to stay engaged in care. We always open our doors for a client to come in and sit and talk to us. Sometimes they just need someone to listen. You'll be surprised how 
just listening and a hug will just calm somebody from just jumping off of a cliff. A lot of our clients come here because they're more comfortable coming here because they feel that the staff is able to relate to their issues culturally. If you come in here and you're having a bad day and you need a hug, you can find a staff member or several to give you that. And so we, we try to touch our clients and to actually be present in their lives and be present in moments with them and to help them overcome crises that they're dealing with on a daily basis. Out of my 96 patients, I only have two that are black. So we are actually trying to work with Brothers United to get this population of black MSM into care and starting on PrEP. The, the largest barrier for black MSM is that they're not being targeted for PrEP. They aren't being told that this is an intervention for you. This is your revolution. Our people are strange about taking medicines especially when they're not sick and then You gotta think about the history. When they injected the men with all them syphilis, a lot of that way of thinking is still there. That's why it's not a whole lot of black African Americans in trials. They're afraid. In the African American community, no one, they don't talk about PrEP at all. It's like it's unheard of. And then when you start talking about PrEP, they're like, oh, I heard that's, that'll give you AIDS. Some people are you know, always concentrating on the fact that this is one of the pills that people take that are actually HIV positive. And I'm like, yes, that's true. But if you, you gotta kind of dig a little deeper and let them know what the pill does and what, you know, what, what scientifically has already been proven. PrEP is a pathway to primary care. We are making sure that all of our patients who come here for PrEP have primary care. And if not, we're trying to provide that for them. Brothers United and the Damien Center work really well in making sure that clients are receiving all of the services that they need. So you're not just getting your clinical services, but that you can also get your community services here. The Damien Center is a much bigger organization, and so they are our one-stop shop. As far as clinical services, they can offer our clients more, but we actually have access to the client base. Most of the clients are here. I think that Black smaller organizations struggle in comparison to larger organizations, partially because they started off as very grassroots organizations, often focused solely on programming. And from my perspective, it just seems like there was never a huge focus on some of those other things that offer sustainability. The problem we've always had we did the work, but we never documented it. We seen the impact in the community, but when we went to the funders, we couldn't prove it. We're in the community, so we model the type of behavior that we want people within our media and social networks to display. You have to be in close proximity to the people and places that are important to you.